Something else going on this weekend. I'm kind of excited about What's being, uh, being in my 30s. You know, this is the kind of stuff you get excited about. Saturday is free comic book day. Oh, yeah. Free comic book day 2015, man. Everyone can get excited about that, though. Oh, of course. I'm, uh, I'm more excited than, like, any eight-year-old out there. Trust me. <laughs> I'll just I knock them down running into the store. I push them into the shelves. They're so small their heads just hit right onto the the wood. Of the Dude, shelf, and I can grab Ow. the comics. Dude, <laughs> survival, man. Yeah, but you could no no you miss you you're missing it. You you got to be careful not to slam them into the comics. That'll degrade the room. <laughs> they're so tiny you could just they're like a bowling ball. You take one kid, wrap them up, you bowl them into other kids. Oh my gosh. So, uh, I, I don't know, I encourage everyone to check it out, man. You can check it out, uh, the Free Comic Book Day website. It's all the, free stuff. Have fun the, with uh, it. They'll let you know where your local shop is. Um, they're not a sponsor or anything. I wish they were giving us some cash, but no. Uh, <laughs> nobody does. Um, but it's a good time, man. Go, go there. There's always some, uh, some like-minded folks talking comics and whatnot that you can chat with. It's a nice community. It is, absolutely. I think uh, you and I may be getting together to go. It's just, oh, baby. We're in, we're in negotiations. It's tough to get together with OJ. You got to sign contracts. You got to, you know, clear a schedule. <sighs> we're trying here. I don't... I... But yeah, we went begin together. Last year we, went, we did it. We went yeah, it was fun. Shop. We went to the place... We went to the, uh, we went to the one near me, right? Boyhood Fantasy. Is that <laughs> what it's called? No, the the comic book store? Yeah, what the hell is it called? Timeless Journey. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking it's even one. in the Marvel Civil War. I'm thinking of the one that was in the city that closed. Oh. Is it called Boyhood Fantasies? No, no, it's Jim Hanley's universe. But no, now I'm kind of depressed because owning your own comic book store could have been a boyhood fantasy. So, <laughs> so we may be getting together, man. I think we're planning on going to the store we used to always go to, the, the Cave Comics. Cave Comics. So we'll see, and we may be doing something for next week's show, uh, depending on how things work out. Yeah, maybe that would be really cool if next we Next week's show may be a little different, and we'll see. I don't want to give too much away because I can't promise it. <laughs> it would be funnier if the audio recorded there just sounds better than mine. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not spoil things. Don't spoil the show. If, you're not, if you don't want people to spoil Ultron, you can't spoil the show for them, okay? I only said what you hinted at. And hinted at it. That's a There'll spoiler? be some sort of calamity for you next week. That's all I gotta say. Uh, anyway, the, the, man. We spoke about Daredevil about two weeks ago on this very program. Have you completed the 13-episode journey of Daredevil? I was sick with a fever for four days. Uh-huh. So, yes. Yes, I did. You were really concerned that you weren't going to be able to watch them all, remember? Yeah, I wasn't going to be able to see him in time. And then I got the plague. Because <laughs> I've been planning this Marvel show for some yeah. time. Years. And I go, John, you got to watch Daredevil by the end. I was like, I don't know if I could do it. You did it. Good job. Yeah, all it took us for me to get 102 fever. Now you're allowed to give your opinion. But I want to talk about something. Um, so that I've kind of uh, read about a little bit. And it's very important in all things. Rhythm. Rhythm and pace. Right? And ex like I, it kind of exists in all matters of life, John. Yeah. I've read things about this. Like you're kind of attracted to certain people, like your friends, um, love interests, and things like that. And there's all kinds of like, theories of like why and, and things like that. A um, lot well, of it has to do with rhythm and how the, how the person kind of speaks and how the person kind of uh, goes about things hmm. that perhaps may affect you and you kind of are in line with other people or that do certain things. Oh, it's weird, right? Yeah, but well, I can see the I can see the logic. Yeah, it's weird stuff, man. We're not we're not getting that deep on this program, no way. <sighs> Let's get some elephant uh, farting noises going right now. To, uh, bring it back to reality. But something I want to talk about is the the pace of the show. It's wonderful. See, that's the thing. Some people complained about it. Well, people aren't used to it, man. So most shows are on television, right? And. They don't have control over the pace of the show at all because... You have 22 minutes. Go, go, go. But the pace of the show on TV is set by the commercial breaks. Mm -hmm. So you always have to consider uh, there's a commercial break coming at this point, at this point. So they kind of uh, build it and then it kind of like drops, right? And then yep. here's the commercial and then they kind of build it again. And then it's like, okay, take a break. Here's your commercial. So for this, with, the, with this, I guess we could call the HBO model. Yeah. There's no commercial breaks. And 
they set their own pace and they set their own rhythm. And I feel like that's really something that helps it out quite a bit. Or makes yeah, it like you're different. not... And like, it's it's interesting too because when you're watching it, it's not like you have to wait for the next episode or anything. Mm -hmm. So they don't end every episode on a cliffhanger to make you come back next week. They've already got your money, right? They don't need to use any tricks to make you keep watching. But there's still times when they do, do, you know put you know they'll put in like a cliffhanger or something but they don't always so sometimes they'll just finish an episode and be like wow i am really satisfied right now yeah yeah this yeah. is perfect yeah um we'll get to what you mentioned of some people that didn't like and stuff like that we'll, we'll talk about that i have some theories on that but um getting back to this to this model of show it's far superior to to, to everything um and the, the shortened season the 13 episode season is great you know like game of thrones is like 10 um a lot of these shows under 15 episodes, whereas uh, a lot of stuff on TV, they got to they do like 22, 23, 25, and yeah, there's so just... much filler in there, and they got to like pad it, and you got to stretch things out, um, and of course, they're always wonder, wonder, worried about <clears throat> being canceled halfway through the season, right? Yep. <laughs> um, and a lot of times, shows are actually not completely done. Uh, when you f see the first episode, they're still working on the, the end of the season. <laughs> So with this, you could tell it's all intricately planned and put together before anything is filmed. You know, it's um, it's all set. Like we're doing this amount of episodes. Here's our story. We're not. We don't have to worry about commercials. We're not worried about being canceled. They're like, you know, they're they're in for this with us. And it's uh, it's just a really superior way of uh, telling a story. That I think the proof is in a lot of these shows that do this. Game of Thrones, for instance. Yeah. Though think awesome. about it, they basically made an entire 13-hour movie. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. People say, oh, it's been done before, but never for superheroes. Never for a superhero thing. And like even this. so, you look at miniseries, miniseries usually had, were bro they were, they're always broken up into an hour and there were still commercials. and Right. There's that up and down. Mm hmm And so I think what you're talking about, a lot of people um, maybe don't like the fact there's so much dialogue and it's almost like a play. How much dialogue yeah. there is. Um, so the way they kind of put the show together, there's a ton of dialogue, ton of exposition, all of that stuff. But then they give you that action. And, there's, and it just... There's not a lot in a lot of these episodes. Maybe it's a couple minutes. Maybe it's like five, ten minutes. But it's top notch. It's like... it's not, Nothing is wasted. Nothing is bad. It is perfect it's all not, the way it's through. It's not just like we're just doing action for the, for the hell of it. It's... No. You build towards it and it's like freaking awesome... And Crazy it usually stuff. means something. Exactly, yeah. Like, there's very big plot reasons for why all of these stupid fights are happening. And it means something because of all the talking that builds it mm -hmm. up and makes it important. Especially when you get in some of the moral issues about the fighting itself. So I think some people, they're not used to that, or it's not what they're looking for. A superhero as once you should blow up. Mm-hmm. Which is what a lot of these movie studios always thought. People, you know, would always only want but you know, some little, it's something totally different. Yeah, and I mean, just watching the way the character acts. I mean, <clears throat> some of the stuff is going to be unrealistic because it's a superhero thing. But some of the ways the people react to what he does and why he does what he does, and the people around him and how they're affected by his actions, it's very realistic in at times. Yeah, it builds really well. It gets better as it goes. Just awesome stuff, man. Um... I was a big fan of Daredevil, and a lot of the stuff that the show's built on, um, 1980s, really, is yep. when a lot of this stuff was put out there. I mean, they, they didn't rip off any comic or, or completely copy any specific rum. They, they certainly took things, which is kind of a smart thing to do, right? Yeah, especially um, in, with a character like, like that, who's had been in movies before that didn't necessarily work. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy to think, because, I mean, it's based off the same material mm -hmm. and how different you could go, right? <laughs> crazy but um it's just weird because i was i've been a fan of this stuff it, like it came out all this the early 80s is when uh daredevil's really fleshed out by frank miller and you know some people kind of know about it and some kind of people kind of laugh at daredevil or whatever or people are more familiar with other characters yeah which is weird after this comes out going to like work <laughs> and people are talking about daredevil and how cool it is yeah and, like who is this guy and these what? are people that uh, yeah, you know, these are like these <sighs> very straight people, very straight list. Uh, you know, I don't know, nine to five type type people, and all of a sudden they know like this um, 
this was kind of like an underground thing for so long. And I think it's kind of cool that he gets gets his you know time in the light, right? The spotlight. Not that he knows it's there. <laughs> Sorry. He could feel the heat of the lamp. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I, coming I, I, down I, I, on him. So, and it's just weird how a lot of this stuff we're talking about all these other movies, but all this stuff is decades, decades old, and it took him all this time to really be able to, hey, maybe it's this could go on screen. <laughs> People will like it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and also the creators now finally getting recognized in a more mainstream way. Um, Frank Miller, for instance, last couple of weeks have been huge for this guy. And all, oh, yeah. all based on stuff that he wrote in the early 80s. So, for instance, uh, Daredevil, and people were talking about him. And then the Batman Superman trailer comes out, and it's got a lot of his uh, Dark Knight Returns stuff in it. Oh, so, nice. And so it's like, oh, this guy did this stuff 30 years ago. And, and no now one... it's yeah. more of a mainstream people well, population are like, oh, this this guy, oh, he did good stuff. Which is what everyone like he's getting, like, And I wonder if he's just like, I told you guys I was good at this. <laughs> Why didn't you believe me? <laughs> yeah. Why couldn't you just pick up the comic? Come on, man. You've had like 20, 30 years to appreciate me and you waited this long. Come on. <laughs> no, no. I, I, well, I mean, look, I mean, I bet you Al, I don't I, I want to know what Alan Moore thinks of all of this. Now, for those of you who don't know, Alan Moore is the guy who wrote The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which was actually a good graphic novel. And some other stuff, and Watchmen that got made into, well, Watchmen got made into a watchable movie. Leave Extraordinary <laughs> Gentlemen got made into a terrible movie that made him go, "I'm never selling my intellectual property again." Well, guys that's that the dude bad. that I mean, and it's always the people like that that uh, the, he, he's the guy that changed comics and kind of brought us to where we are today. And a lot of the stuff yeah. wouldn't really exist without these guys, and those are the guys that don't really get paid. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the it's like the third generation later that kind of finds his stuff and then. Oh, this is good. We should do this, but the original people usually don't get the, uh, yeah. the credit or the the cash, right? It's like it's like the people that invented rock and roll and and the blues and and all that stuff. So, you know, right? Shoby Checker doing the twist. <laughs> you didn't get the the, the Axl Rose money, okay? But you don't get there from there without them. Yeah, there's so, a clear progression. That's right. But like, ah, oh, man. There's another point I had here for us uh, for, for Daredevil on the comics and stuff. Oh yeah, I gotta say it was kind of funny. For a bunch of the episodes, like in the earlier episodes, I felt like I was watching an episode of Psych starring Batman. Because <laughs> in Psych, they have flashbacks to the main character and his dad, mm -hmm. and the main character's dad is teaching him how to do detective work and how to figure stuff out. Yeah, and then they started doing that a little bit with the kid with a young Matt Murdock. And then you see him use that stuff when he's older. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> and that, and in psych, the dude pretends to be psychic, but he's just really observant. And in this, he pretends to just, I don't know, know things when in reality he's hearing heartbeats and like mm. knowing people are lying. And it's really interesting. Cause like, <clears throat> I was just sitting there going, okay, Sean Spencer just got a lot cooler. Well, there's a lot of influence in there. I, I think they definitely took, certain things from comics, and then it's got that Scorsese vibe to it for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, how about the how they handle the origin of the character? I think it was awesome. Um, you start off the, episode, the first episode, and he's already down, and this stuff's already in his face. Yeah, it just... And you don't have to go through the no whole time. thing. You don't have to go through the whole thing of, like, seeing him push the guy out of the way, and then the yeah. slow-mo. It's of, just, like, ar it's already done. It doesn't boom. matter. Yeah, that's it. It's done. His father finds him, he's screaming... Um, I can't see. And it's just like, oh my God, you know? It and was really, it was, I mean, that's one of the most horrifying things you can really imagine. And just that right there, you're like pulled in, like, what is this, right? Yeah, um, it, they don't pull punches. So that, that was well done. The, the origin tale was good. And then they kind of go back, obviously, to flashback stuff, but it's never, you're never like, oh, we're in the past again. Or Yeah, like, you don't, you're never there. sitting there just frustrated at it. Right, 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 right. Um, I like how with the villain side, there's uh well it's not even a villain side really it's, it's there's like multiple sides going at the yeah. same time instead of just here's the good guys here's the bad guys it's more of a um or like almost like a mafia movie or something where there's just multiple things happening uh different families and are they can they all trust each other and how do they play off each other and yeah um, 
anything could really happen. It's like cha- a little chaotic. It's nice, rich and story. The different perspectives, like from a lot of these people's perspectives, like some people really believe they're in the right. Right. And you're, and you can kind of just go, you know, I see what they're got, where they're coming from here. I disagree, but there's, <sighs> there's logic to their thoughts. You uh-huh. know? Yeah, 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 yeah. And some of the characters, even the supporting characters are just so great. Wesley is one of my favorite characters in the show. Well, he's, going he's just so competent. <laughs> like it's, it's scary. He, oh, he outshines villain characters who I thought should be much more powerful and, and capable and competent seeming like Wesley's just like, I got this because he just walks around like he owns everything. Yeah, they basically said, here's our characters, and then if they're going to be a character, they're going to have something to do. They're not just going to be there. And they're going yeah, to have no one's personality, wasted. and they're going to, yeah, they're going to have things to be doing. And um, It goes in places you don't expect. Like, for instance, he gets shot, right? Well, are we going to the spoilers? Yeah, okay. it came out like four weeks or three weeks ago. This is what we do here. Spoil Well, in people. that case, the way he gets shot yeah. is, again, he's just like, I'm cool. I can do everything. I'm the best. No one can touch me. I'm mm-hmm. awesome. Um, they did the thing where he has Karen at gunpoint, right? And he goes, uh, what, what did he want her to do again? He's like, you're going to, um, oh, you're going to tell uh, Yurik to drop it, to, you know, drop the whole thing. And then, yeah. like, and just make, you know, and he was giving her instructions of things to do. And if this was any, any other show or a lot of these other shows, that would be three episodes of her yeah. telling him not to do it. And then she's like standing there with like, Oh, I have a secret I can't tell, right? And that'd be like a whole arc, and it would, it would be, I was like, I don't want to see that, right? Yeah, right. I was like, that's the last thing I want to see. And then she just shoots, <laughs> she shoots him a bunch of times, and you're like, oh, that Did was that freaking just... awesome. Well, the best part is she also goes, "Do you think this is the first time I've shot somebody?" Oh yeah, she's probably she's got a little bit of a, a past. We'll see if they get into what they get into. They've, they've kind of yeah. hinted at that, you know. Um, Yurik dies. Yeah, and that was shocking to me. Um, he's a character that. Goes back to the 70s in the comics. He's a big part of the character. A lot of the storylines, he's still alive today in the comics. So, Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So I was like, oh, my God. And I was thinking, oh, he's safe, foggy. You know, like everyone's safe that I know, right? But they basically killed him, and they're like, he's like you read some comics? You think you know some stuff? Well, uh, no. Nope. You don't know nothing. Like, anyone can go. <laughs> this is a different universe. Deal with it. Yeah, it's different. Um, it's still, you know, plays to the strengths of the character and is based on the same thing, but just because you've read that it doesn't mean you know anything. And I thought it was kind of cool, actually. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, like, it doesn't, it didn't matter. You didn't get the feeling that you were wa- reading through, wa- like, sitting there watching, like, oh, man, this is that arc they did back in 97. Okay, uh-huh. cool. No, this is, like, you're watching his origin story, and you know you've seen this a million times, you know, Daredevil Year One and blah, 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 blah. Whatever the heck it was called, but even so, you're like you saw the previous movie, whatever. It's still new to you, and you don't know what's going to happen. And yeah, this entire and it just I didn't know that that character is still around in the comics. But oh, like, yeah. it's a big it's a big character. That's why I was really shocked. <clears throat> yeah, they just take him out. Take him out. And down. the thing is also like I like, I mean I don't like what happened to him because he was a really cool character. Yeah. But the reason it happened to him, like. Karen just keeps effing everything up. That's the plot of the show. Karen is there to ruin things for everyone. <laughs> I, I don't know if that's 100% true, but, but she makes some mistakes. Yeah, she makes some mistakes. But I mean, and she's not an irredeemable character. She's got to learn yeah. from her mistakes and take responsibility. And I'll tell you, she's a lot more interesting than she ever was in any comic book. I'll tell you right now. They gave her a lot. I mean, in the comics, like, she's just some chick they hired to be the secretary, falls in love with Matt. You know, they didn't. Later on, they uh, Frank Miller came in and, and changed her around, and then she got into some, some bad stuff and did some bad things. But that's pretty much what the character was. And then here they, they set her up well, and um, you know the whole thing she went through in the beginning with the murder and all that. Yeah, kind of played into the character. And well, first um, that was the I'm helpless and didn't do anything wrong, yet here I am thing. Yeah. And then things just get worse and worse and. One worse. thing I could criticize, but you can help me out with this, like the time span that went by. I couldn't really quite figure it out because she gets to that point where, you know, everyone's kind of fighting and she's all upset. And like, we aren't like we used to be. Remember when things were so good? I'm like, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you've been working there like a week and a half. Like, what do you mean? Yeah, right. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe this was to be a few months have gone, but I don't know. I can. 
I yeah. have to imagine it was like at least a month or two, but also it's like, <laughs> I'm still wondering how Foggy and Matt are surviving with their no clients. They comment on it and they're just like, just still doing their thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's yeah, some weird stuff in there. Yeah, also at first it was kind of interesting because they basically kind of made it seem like Karen and Foggy were going to get together. Yeah, they were teasing that for sure. They were teasing it a lot and then Foggy He kind of dropped and, it. He gave up. <laughs> it's just like, but the thing is that's something that an idiot nerd would do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, to be fair, though, Foggy is also one of my favorite characters. Oh, he's great. He's amazing. He's great. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Um, and then something that. that I know you like, man, the suit uh, at the end, like he earns the suit. And it makes sense that he has a suit that looks like that. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't just go, I'm going to be this, um, I need like this and that. It's, he goes through, takes beatings, and he knows what he needs. And then the suit is based on the need to have it. Right. Yeah, it's not just like I'm getting a suit because that's what superheroes do. It's I'm getting a suit because I'm getting beaten up a lot, and people keep saying you're stupid. You're gonna die. Wear armor. <laughs> yeah, she keeps telling them. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of throwbacks to characters in the comics, uh, like the owl, the gladiator. They kind of like they're thrown in there a little bit. Um, there's a reference to Electra. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Um, Where was that? When they do the flashback with Foggy and Matt in college and they're walking around and Foggy's like, whatever happened to that chick from Greece that uh, you, you were Oh! Out of? Yeah, there's like little things in there. And then um, uh, Wilson's, which, which Wilson Fisk, like, which, which is uh, his woman's name, whatever her name is. Oh, yeah. She talks about a guy she used to be with. The Prince guy. She was like, I used to be with this this other man. Is that Von Doom? No, 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 no. no. Okay. That would have been hilarious. The kingpin's the kingpin's woman. I'm talking about. She's like, yeah, I know. And she says, I like this prince once said, blah blah, blah made said some line about you're the most beautiful thing here. I'd love to take you home with me. Yeah, no, she, no. What she says is a man in a white suit with an ascot, and that's that's the, what the kingpin always wore in the comic book. Oh <laughs> wow, <laughs> yeah, that one I picked up. I was like, oh shit, that's great. You know. Um, that's what he wore. Like, you watch, like, the Spider-Man animated series? Like, that's what he yeah. wore. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, that, that's how I always pictured him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's an awesome show. They haven't even gone to the good stuff, man. So if you, if you're kind of, if you watch it and maybe you're like, oh, I'm not blown away by this. Like, that's not, that's just the setup. I mean, the stuff with Bullseye and Elektra, um, that's where you get to the real Daredevil meet. And that's going to be, if they, if they do that and, and it's as done well as this with the same respect for the, the character and the same level of acting and all that stuff. It's going to be freaking awesome. So, well, don't forget. I mean, they've got three more shows that they're doing, right? Yeah. They're doing Jessica Jones, Iron Fist, Luke Cage. Then I think the defenders and then Daredevil season two. Uh, wait, I thought it's a lot. You, you did. You threw Iron Fist in there, right? Yeah. He's in there. Yeah. <clears throat> I think they hinted at him. Yeah. Um, Madam Gal, I think that's going to be his villain. Also, they had um, well, when Stick went back to report to somebody, yeah, that goes. That's all the hand, yeah. Okay. Um, and then there's like Stick's group who fights the hand. I don't, I don't remember what they're what they're called, but the fist, the foot, <gasps> the foot clan. The foot clan, I think, was a parody of that, of the hand. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> the turtles were a parody of Daredevil, right? I don't know about that. What do you? <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but I think the foot... I don't know, canister of poisonous goop? The foot came landing after on you? that, so I don't know, whatever. But um, I'm hoping they do the Punisher like this. That'd be Yeah, because, dude, you're watching this. This is so gritty. Like, every time they swore, I giggled. And there's, <laughs> you're like, this is great, swearing. They're not saying zick. No, dude, flinch. they didn't pull punches. It honestly felt like nobody said something stupid because the censor was going to get mad at them. <laughs> right, they didn't man, have to do freedom. verbal gymnastics to get around saying a particular word. That's right. I think certain characters are kind of more cut out for this format instead of the movies. Mm -hmm. And do certainly Daredevil because well, there's Punisher. a lot more. And the Punisher, definitely, yeah. Because the Punisher, that dude just runs around going crazy on stuff. Yeah, but like if, with that format where it's a little slower and you could get into episodes and you could kind of get into why he does this instead of just, mm -hmm. he's crazy. Yeah, but he's there's a reason a for being a nut job. Right. A good reason, and yeah, I kind of want to see the dude in the van. I forgot his name, though. So I understand that while watching, while binge-watching Daredevil, you yourself were having some hallucinations. Yeah. Some dreams, some Marvel dreams. Yeah, a little bit. Just one. All right, well, you can tell us about this if you can. Okay. <clears throat> 
Okay, so... I went to a fancy schmancy auction with my dad, but we went prepared. So, I, we went there and I had my camera. Like, the, the camera we used to record Snozman and a whole bunch. But it was somehow concealed on my person, which is hard to do with a big, bulky DSLR, but somehow we did it. And I also had a notepad. You see, my father and I were going to this auction as some sort of spy. Oh yes, we were spying on someone. So this was a very snazzy occasion. We, we uh, walked in, everyone's dressed in suits and ties and fancy dresses. We walk into this big auction room, uh, much nicer than the one in the Daredevil show, by the way. We're in a beautiful auction hall. Like it's, it's a big, big one or two story place. The ceiling is high. The walls and windows are beautiful. The architecture is divine. So we walked in and we ended up uh, getting some seats and we found ourselves sitting next to a very large, but not really fat man. He's just a big guy, you know? This is the kingpin. His suit was white or gray, as I remember it. And his, he was completely bald and his head was very round. Very round. So we're sitting there and we're like, okay, we might as well talk with the person we're standing next to. Um, so we asked him his name and he said something like Ethan Hawking. <laughs> like he said, Ethan something. The combination Ethan. of Ethan Hawk. I know and, uh, Ethan Hawking. I don't know. I, it's all I got. Okay. And he might have had a woman with him, but Stephen I don't Hawking remember. Stephen Hawking and Ethan Hawke Ethan together. Hawk, they had a kid. Yes. Oh my gosh, that would be a crazy smart person. Anyway, um, he might have had a woman with him, I can't remember. So the auction started, so we all sat down. It went on for a little bit, but then there was a woman running the auction, and she's like, and she stopped because she wanted to say thank you to the person who really set this up and was their major benefactor. So she turns, she goes in the microphone and stops and says, and we want to thank everyone for coming, but one man especially. Thank you, Wilson Fisk! And you just see the guy we're sitting next to go, uh-oh. He just froze. He's just like, this is bad. Because in the beginning of Daredevil, you don't know who Wilson Fisk is. You don't even hear his name for, like, what, three episodes? Four episodes? Like, it's a huge deal. Like, if, we, if someone says Wilson Fisk's name, they die. They don't die. All of their family dies, and then they die. Yeah. Like, it's serious business. So this guy, this big guy just stood up, who's, as John said, obviously the kingpin. And he walks up to the front of the hall, he goes to the microphone, the he, he just stops and looks around the room. Once he just passes his gaze over everybody and says, it brings me no pleasure to do this. Seal the rooms. All the doors and windows outside are sealed and locked. Were you scared at this point or were you happy? I was a bit scared. You're excited. Because it sounded like they were pumping gas into the building. <laughs> Joker gas. <clears throat> yeah, something really bad. Everyone starts freaking out, man. They're just going nuts. People are running around like chickens with their heads cut off. So my dad and I left as quick as we could. We ran out the front, the main, the main door to this particular room and reached one of the outer doors. And the panic crowd is just kicking at it, shoving at the windows. This dude keeps smacking this one door. He's hitting it with like a chair. He's going crazy on it. And the door won't budge. And then the man tries the door handle. And it just opens up. So everybody runs to this door and we're all running outside. My dad and I run out there and we make, we make it to his car. And I realize I don't have my camera. I'm like, oh, great. After all this, I don't have the camera. <laughs> Thankfully, we open up the trunk. My dad's like, no, I got the camera. Puts it in the trunk. We get in the car and we just drive away. And I'm just... Did you get any footage? No, man. Nothing. Uh, well, maybe he dreamed me did. I didn't see anything. What if you turn yeah, on the camera in real it. life now and there's footage of the stream? That would be kind of creepy. <laughs> and it would remind me a little bit of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. There's a guy whose superpower is to smash a camera, and then a Polaroid camera, and then a photo comes out with a vision of, a, of someone they're looking for. So you escape the kingpin and his gas. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the kingpin's gas, the king gas. Did you try, did you try to save any other people that, or you just left? Forget the door that. open. They can get out. <laughs> Whatever. We were, but my dad and I were like lost running through these cars. Like we wow. lost each other for a minute. There were just so many people. A harrowing tale. Yeah. This is what happens when I, I don't even know if I had a fever at this point. I think it's safe to assume with my expert diagnosis here <laughs> that perhaps you were molested by the kingpin as a child. Uh, okay. Quick note. Yeah. 
So I think in our last episode or one before, I mentioned that I was driving to work one day and this stupid idiot turkey was in the middle of the road just like, I own this highway. Okay, sure. Well, last night, no, 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 I wouldn't have remembered to talk about this except in this email where I, I email myself my dreams after I type them up so I don't lose them. Uh huh. I wrote turkey on the highway and I remembered last night driving home from a friend's house. I'm just driving along. The speed limit's like 40, 55 or something like that. It's a back road in... um like a really Cold rural kitchen. part of New York. And <clears throat> I'm just driving along, and my friend's in the passenger seat, and he goes, dude, stop the car. Because I'm looking ahead of me, and I see something gray in the middle of the road. I'm not really paying... I, I really can't see what it is. It's like, that's weird. There's a shape in the middle of the road. That's peculiar. My friend's like, dude, stop the car. So I stop the car. Like, I come to a, I come to a stop. I don't hit the brakes as hard as I could. So, like, I, I wasn't going fast enough such that it was a huge deal, but I stopped with a good six inches in front of the object in the road and it's a goose just standing there a live goose. goose with a its candied neck goose? just what a candied goose yeah canadian goose just standing there with its neck up like its neck was maybe above my bumper level so i'm just standing there like uh my friend's like open getting ready to open the door to shoot the goose off the road i'm honking the horn so i turn i drive to the left to kind of scooch the goose to the right and the thing gets scooch off, you know, the goose. scooch the goose. Yup. Hashtag that, mother zickers. Sorry, I just got really loud. I apologize. But anyway. That part will be edited out of this program. Just continue. So we we scooch the goose over. And uh, my friend's like, yeah, dude, that that wouldn't have damaged your car. I'm like, are you sure? Yeah. You basically would have decapitated it. You would have broken its neck and you would have bumped over the rest of the goose. Because the, the, the neck was just standing straight up, man. So he was disappointed. No, he was glad. He told me about a time when he ran over a baby bunny. Wow. <clears throat> he was driving and this little white thing just scooted under the tires of the car. Kill a baby bunny, you deserve a ticket. Not a man with a proto-man <laughs> air freshener, okay? I mean, I'll admit, dude, there was, this one, there was one meal I had where basically five animals died for my meal. Like, it was, like, I was on vacation and and... I was never I like I was like I'm not coming back here for like ever. I'm not gonna what? live another day on this earth. I'll eat <laughs> I'll eat all this. Yeah, so I ordered a mixed grill and it was like lamb, chicken, beef, pork, rabbit. Where's the friggin' fish? Lamb, chicken, beef, pork, rabbit. All land I animals? Ate, it was five land animals. <sighs> okay. Like, it's not as extreme as if you go to the places that, like, the place like we went to, the, uh... Um, we've already done, we've done the whole show about BB animal meat. We're gonna go back to this now? No, I'm just saying, five animals died for one meal. How messed we do up one, is that? Can dude? we do one show that's not about baby animal meat? Okay. It seems like it's what we talk about. I'm really hungry. <laughs> if the views exploded based on baby animal meat talk, would you consider doing, or making the show exclusively about it? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, honestly, I was talking baby. with my friend, dude, about the bunny. I'm like, baby. yeah, he's like, dude, it was a baby bunny. I was really sad. I'm like, I know you couldn't even eat it. Just, just trying to eat things. <sighs> All right. Uh, can you tie it to Marvel? How are the duck? Was, can you, can you, oh, my gosh. You, yeah, dude. Let's try to tie it back to the what we're doing here. I'm still um, super psyched for Friday, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to get to, uh, let's get into some Marvel stuff now to the Marvel movies. Uh, interesting, kind of thinking about the history of superhero films, right? And it kind of goes in waves. So you had that 1989 Batman thing, and it kind of blew up, right? But mm -hmm. then by the time you get to Batman and Robin, it's dead. So it kind of, kind of goes up and then kind of dies off, uh, kind of like a wave, right? And then, yeah. of course, you had Spider-Man and X-Men, which kind of brought it all back. Way back. And then by the time you got to Spider-Man 3, X-Men 3, it was terrible. And uh, it was dead once again. You had uh, Batman Begins in 2005, but the series was kind of getting the ball rolling. Yeah, it was. It, was, it made a, like a dark, gritty superhero movie that mm -hmm. wasn't like absurd. It was kind of the, the sign of things to come, I think, that one, right? Mm -hmm. but, but they kind of came in waves, and I think um, Hollywood would kind of look at this, and they would go, it's not because the movies got bad, it's because... Uh, people just don't like, you know, superhero movies anymore. <laughs> it certainly would happen. Hollywood logic. Certainly would happen after Batman and Robin, because there was supposed to be a Superman movie, 
Superman Lives was supposed to come out in like 98. And based on Batman and Robin, they canceled that. Any kind of superhero talk was canceled. It's not like, and again, it's not, we made a bad movie. It's, it's, uh, people just don't like this anymore. They don't like superheroes. People don't like superhero movies anymore. That's why Green Lantern bombed. Right. They just don't like it. Um, and they don't work. But there's people that knew better, man. And, um, people, people in power, I think, started to listen to those folks, perhaps. <laughs> hey, no way. This is, this is mess. This is not good. <laughs> That's why we don't want to see them. Someone yeah. let the nerds get control of their movies. So if you go back to the late 90s, Marvel was in pretty bad shape. This is pre-Disney. And yeah. they were actually filing for bankruptcy. In some bad shape, made some bad deals. So they decided to basically sell off uh, properties to these, to these movie companies, right? These movie studios. And mm -hmm. these deals they put together are these time release things, which is really weird. And they're still in place today. It's basically like they have the rights to the characters as long as they make a movie about them within a certain time period. I think it's five years. Yeah, so that's why you're seeing the Fantastic Four again. <laughs> it's kind of why you saw the Spider-Man reboot. People are like, why are you rebooting this so quickly? It's because they, they basically had to do the Sony in order to keep the license going, right? And if they don't do this, then those licenses go back to Marvel. And, um, you know, obviously Disney took over Marvel. Things change, and all of a sudden now they're they were filing for bankruptcy. Now, of course, they're perhaps part of the biggest uh, <laughs> corporation there is, yeah, the most powerful. So they they obviously want all these back. Um, something I did not know in researching this, because you know, like Spider Man's with Sony, we all know mm -hmm. X Men's with Fox, right? Something I did not know. I don't know if you did, but basically all the characters were with someone at some point, <laughs> like all of them, dude. All of them? Yeah. For instance, um, Iron Man <clears throat> was, was with New Line Cinema. They got that back November 2005 because they never made a movie on it. <laughs> um, Thor was with Sony. That came back to them in 2006. And Black Widow was with Sony too at one point. Or, or Black Widow was with Lionsgate. <laughs> well, hey, they had Iron Man. So they just basically prostituted out all the, everything. Uh, Black Panther was with uh, Columbia. <laughs> And that came back to them in 2005. Obviously, Daredevil was with, I think, Sony, I, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah. And that came back to them a couple years ago, and that's why they were able to make the series. That's awesome. That we just talked about for like four hours. So I was thinking, okay, it was just, just Spider-Man and the X-Men, but it was like basically everybody. And a lot of these uh, movies just never came out or were just never done, and they got them all back <laughs> over time. So had they made an Iron Man, had uh, they made a Thor or something – then you would never have gotten this. You never would have gotten Avengers. Yeah. And you would have had this weird, uh, probably just bad movies. <laughs> well, that's one of the problems though. Yeah. Like if the, the problem with Marvel right now is they're never going to get those other properties back until they, the, they stop making good superhero movies. Because as long as someone can make a vaguely profitable superhero movie about the Fantastic Four or mm -hmm. the X-Men or Spider-Man, it's never going back to Marvel. Yeah, the ones that they don't have right now is X Men, which includes a lot of characters like Deadpool and a whole all the X Universe stuff. Um, Spider Man's with Sony, but they've made a deal now where they could use him for Civil War. Uh, they're basically gonna, no, they're going to make a movie, uh, the Spider Man movie with, uh, and basically they're pay Sony, so they're they're kind of working together now. Um, see, that's probably the the only way we can see a, a good like compromise between the two camps. And the the sad one for me is Fantastic Four. Which they just keep making bad movies just to keep this license going, um, and the new one doesn't really look good. Maybe it is, I don't know, but it doesn't oh, look too I, exciting to me. I just had a horrifying thought. Like I feel really bad about having had this thought. Do you um, want to <laughs> they should give the Fantastic Four. They should hire Happy Madison Productions to make the next one. <laughs> just to kill it. If the next one, no, no. If the uh. next one is that bad, like. Honestly, I could I could see Adam Sandler just going crazy on it. I can't see it being good in any way, shape, or form. But mm -hmm. you know what? I think it might be better than getting another bad Fantastic Four movie. I don't think in they this care. Style of bad. I don't think they'll, I think they'll just keep doing it. Oh. And it's sad because the Fantastic Four was really the first Marvel thing. They were like, like they, the beginning of the whole thing in the in the, the, in the early sixties. And the whole point um, with them, they're like, lost like, somewhere at sea. Yeah, <laughs> they can't bring them back, dude, dude. They're stuck in Doom's dungeon, dude. Basically, yeah, they're in purgatory forever. 
Well, that's how it goes, you know? Um, and of course, the thing with the Marvel movies, man, which is what people always wanted. And I can't believe that we're here, you know, 2015, and they actually did it, which is making all these movies and then have the, the, uh, the brain, the brains behind it to have them linked together. Wow. In the same universe. <laughs> like how many, what other movies have you seen where they pulled stuff together like that? Not this many, not this many. <clears throat> uh, and it's basically, it's, again, it's basically like a comic. That's what they've done. Make the comic book universe and the characters all kind of are in the same kind of playing field. They know mm-hmm. each other. Um, and like people are like, oh, this is genius. They did this in the movie. But I mean, the, the heavy lifting has been done. I mean, by the comic creators. A- it's just got to do it and trust yeah. that people will get into it. One quick thing I want to touch on mm-hmm. <clears throat> is regarding the universe being one coherent universe. Yes. Even Daredevil fits in very well. Yeah. Because the, they talk about the Battle of New York, mm-hmm. and that gives a reason for why New York is in such bad shape, so all the horrible things happening make sense. Even yeah, the crime more. lords are coming up, trying to take uh-huh. advantage of the rebuilding process. And and, and the, the reporter behind him, there's things, there's news articles he's done about the Battle of New York. They reference it, the rebuilding, all this stuff. And it all fits in with the movies. Right. Of it, course, it really are... gives, yeah. Of course, there's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is connected as well, but unfortunately, I think you could basically not watch any of it, and you're fine. <laughs> which I think is Sadly. Kinda, yeah, I think it's kind of sad. I think they should... I don't know. I don't know if they should force people to. We'll talk about that later, a continuity. I catch, well, I'm like, a season, I'm like, what, two seasons behind now? I mean, it's, there's cool stuff on it, but if you never saw yeah. it, I don't think it would matter. I think you could watch any movie, and it doesn't matter at all. Yeah. One thing um, I do want to touch on, again, is the fact that they're making a Deadpool movie. Yeah, but that's going to be... That's so. That's, uh, that's Sony Fox. or is that Fox? Because Fox, because Deadpool. The reason I want to talk about it is because you know every all these all the X Men, excuse me, characters. Deadpool is in the X Men universe, so that's why they have it, right? Yeah. Just imagine this meeting. Like I just talked about how all these different characters were like split up in different um, <laughs> different studios. Like just imagine that that like whatever it was when they did this, was it like bidding or something or what? Like. We'll give you this amount for for, for Thor. <laughs> like, like I don't how know, much it sounds they crazy pay for these characters. And there's all these weird fine print to it. Um, for instance, uh, Quicksilver's in X Men also, and also in the Avengers, because he's he was an Avenger, and he was also in the X Men. Yeah, because he's a mutant, not an Inhuman. So now, like they they can they can both use him. Crazy. And they're just, and they're different. They're different Quicksilvers. They're yeah, they're totally different. But it's the same. I mean, it's based on the same character. Yeah. But that character was was originally with the uh, Evil Brotherhood of Mutants, so he's an X Men character. But then later on, like the seventies, was part of the, the Avengers. And so, he was part of the X Men. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now it's like we could both use it. It's just, it's just crazy stuff, man. Imagine like yeah. just seeing these contracts and how ridiculous they must be, like naming characters and. <laughs> no, I gotta say though, well, like. I, I, I got to hand it to, uh, what is it, Sony? Who has the X-Men or Fox? Fox? Fox, Fox is X-Men. X-Men. Sony's Spider-Man. Yeah. When they did the when they did First Class and then Days of Future Past, mm-hmm. they really fixed a lot of problems that they created for themselves. But I got to say, Quicksilver, he was so much fun in the movie, man. Oh, yeah. They could, they, he was great. Um, but they have to do good because... The Marvel movies are pretty decent, so it made them kind of go, oh, "Shit, we gotta like, we can't just throw stuff out there anymore." You know, like I have, I have to wonder though, who goes and says, "We're gonna make a mediocre movie. We want to make just enough money that this was worth it." It's not really that. It's just people that think they know better, and gonna, they don't listen to the people who know what they're talking. Well, they're gonna make their version of it, you know, and or, do, do, or they do, don't really care. They don't really have a love for the source, so it's just like this is gonna be my thing. Well, you know? to be fair. To be fair, there is, to a certain extent, making my version of something. Like, yeah, you had yeah, Christopher yeah. Nolan's Batman, right? Yeah. And you had a lot um, of this whoever the heck pulled, did man. Daredevil's Daredevil. Yeah. But again, it's, it's done respectful to the character. Like, And, and mm-hmm. you could go through Nolan's stuff and go, okay, this was taken from here, this was taken a little bit from there, yeah. a little bit from there. So and obviously he has respect himself. for the source stuff. Yeah, though honestly, a lot of the stuff they changed was the stuff that I didn't like. Oh, yeah. Like... Yeah. My name is Bane. I have a PhD. Oh. I earned it in this prison. I didn't mind Bane. He wasn't bad, no, but it was fine. just kind of like, he was more interesting than a big, just roided out guy. Mm-hmm. But he was just, I mean, I guess the fact that he was unsettling was what made him such a good character in the movie. My whole thing is you could change whatever you want to change. 
you can do whatever you want to do, but it's got to be true to the character. Yeah. And then, then I'm cool, you know? Yeah, because he whooped Batman's face, which he's supposed Batman, to do. Batman. <laughs> and like, I yeah, was again, only you, trying to fix his vocal cords. And that's the thing. Like, I, I don't... They haven't done exactly what's in comics. I don't expect them to do that. No. Um, but be respectful to them and um, and those guys that, that put that made the blueprints for this and made these characters uh, what they are. I love how they changed the Phoenix Saga and X-Men 3. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> so anyway, let's get into some of these movies, man. We'll just kind of go through it uh, fairly quickly. We'll go just through a quick... All- Go through all the movies that we've seen and kind of give her thoughts and whatever we gotta say. Are you gonna go? Are you going to the list of the Ultimate Marvel movie marathon? Uh, yes, basically. Cool. Rock on. So basically, let's go back to 2008, and like we mentioned, the second I would say the second wave of superhero movies kind of came and died because we had it good X Men movies, good Spider Man movies, and then by the time you get to the third one, got out of control, got mm-hmm. pretty bad, and those were pretty much dead. Um, at some point, they announced Iron Man. And people kind of laughed at this Iron Man. Why? What the hell? Not in in the in the comic pantheon. Not one of the A listers. He's just kind of maybe there. a B, maybe a B, maybe. And who you're gonna get to play him? Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. and uh, Pepper Potts. What was that chick's name? <laughs> it's not Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, it's, Gwyneth uh... Paltrow. Yes. Oh, it is. Okay. And I Gwyneth was gonna say it's a lady who looks like Gwyneth Paltrow. And <laughs> John doesn't even know who's in the movie. And Robert Downey Jr., people just go, like, this is a joke. Why even bother? This is ridiculous. Disney's behind this. Like, this is the first time they're kind of doing one of these. Like, their studios, whatever, and they don't get it. And it's going to be terrible. Kind of comes in under the radar. And comes out, and you're like, wow, Robert Downey Jr. is actually perfect for... Uh, he is this. He is Tony Stark. And not like, only is he perfect, he's actually better than the comic version ever really and more <clears> interesting and... This character kind of like needs to be on film because it kind of brings him to life more, you know. He's he's supposed to be this bombastic like mm-hmm. and subtlety of like facial expressions and things. I think really help. Because he's like a that. sarcastic a hole. Exactly, exactly. Like and in the comics, you can't really pull all of that out of there. You you can try, but it's not quite the it's same. Different, it's different, totally different format. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, he's perfect, and the movie's actually pretty fun. Gwyneth Paltrow or whatever, but she's in it, yeah. But like this is this is really freaking awesome, you know. This is a great this is a great fun origin story to watch. Like my I bet you my mom would like the movie. Yeah. And that's another thing they've done was where a lot of different people could watch it and, and yeah. dig get something out of it and dig it. And um, it's not dumbed down. Right. It's not like anyone can watch it because it's really stupid and easy to consume. There's different levels. It's got a lot of color in it, <sighs> a lot of life to it. Yeah, it's a good watch, and then it's pretty successful, and it doesn't happen right away. But basically, Iron Man becomes the uh, the mascot character of Marvel. In the past, it was Spider Man or Wolverine or um, you know whatever. It was like Iron Man's like the top guy. Like the, that's how big the movie was and like elevated this whole thing. I brought back Robert Downey Jr.'s career too. Yeah, yeah. Was this before or after Tropic Thunder? That was before. Yeah, <coughs> he did like Sherlock Holmes and all that stuff, but. Yeah, like, like boom! Wow. Okay. Yeah. Then you had the Incredible Hulk, also in two thousand eight. Okay, and that was the was that the Norton Hulk? That was the Norton Hulk. I think this movie movie was underrated. It wasn't great, but mm-hmm. it was nowhere near as bad as a lot of people gave it told said it was. Well, it's a lot better than the two thousand three one, the two thousand three yeah. Hulk movie. I remember going to see that and sitting there, and uh, you know. It just keeps going and going, and there's, there's no Hulk, and there's and there's just nothing really happening, and you're sitting there, and I, I, all of a sudden I hear a kid behind me just start crying. <laughs> Where is the Hulk, <laughs> mommy? I thought we were seeing the Hulk. <laughs> I was I just wanted to be like, yeah, I feel the same way. <laughs> uh, that little child was saying everything that everyone in the theater yeah. was thinking. And we were started like, well, yeah, he's right, laughing a little bit. <clears throat> Um, so that, yeah, it was weird. It was a weird movie that wasn't successful, but 2008 they made this one. Yeah, it's a decent movie. Um, the thing that's odd about it, it's it's different than all of these other ones because first of all, you had the an actor change. Yeah, for the main character, which uh, was was Edward Norton, and then became Mark Ruffalo. So that didn't happen with the other ones. They were able to keep the same cast, 
But the other thing that's weird about it is none of the characters in this movie are ever referenced again or talked about or, or mentioned. Yeah, he's just Bruce Banner. <laughs> well, I mean, they kind of explain it by having Bruce Banner just go, F this, I'm going to hide out in India by myself and treat sick children. It's true, but, I mean, you had uh, Betty Ross, and she's he, he loved her so much, and then it's just, there's no real closure to it, and yeah, she's never brought up again, ever, and, uh, you know, of course, the general's after him, he, I guess he gave up on that, I don't know, um, and the abomination's still out there somewhere. <laughs> so it's kind of odd that they kind of just were like, yeah, well, uh, these characters are goodbye. And what's weird at the end is um, Stark is actually in it, and he comes out, after the credits, he comes out, and he, he talks to uh, General Ross, and he's like, we're putting together a team. And he goes, who? And that was the end. So he was almost like doing the Coulson before. He was doing the Coulson, Coulson slash Fury. Before there even was a Coulson. And then yeah. when does this happen? Why was It didn't make any sense, really. They, they kind of just, that didn't happen. Though, wasn't Coulson in Iron Man 2? That's where, he, yeah, that's where he started. No, it was Thor. Thor came out after, I, I believe, oh. Iron Man 2. Yeah. Oh, my. Well, well, we'll find out when we go through the list. Iron Man 2 was in 2010. Okay, okay, we'll get there. Uh, to the, yeah, Iron Man 2, not a whole lot to say about it. It's uh, Mickey Rourke as Whiplash. Oh, do we, are we skipping? Oh, that's the next movie? That's the next movie, yeah. Okay. If you'll note, it's just Iron Man, Hulk, Iron Man for these. Like, right. Iron Man, well, the first Iron Man was so good, before they even kick off anything else, they have Iron Man 2 in the Like, works. whoa, whoa, whoa. This is successful. We gotta, okay. <laughs> you, you can't let this go to sleep. And I think that might have been one of the things that kept the fervor going for the other movies. Yeah. Because Iron Man 3 didn't come out for a while. One thing I want to mention about Iron Man 2 that I'm curious about because people are talking about the Civil War the Civil War movie coming, I think, next year and how it's about the government wanting heroes to register and how Tony Stark will be cool with that and then Captain America will be against it. In mm-hmm. Iron Man 2, a big p- uh, part of the plot was the government wanting Tony Stark to register his suits, <laughs> if you remember. <laughs> and he was yeah. like all against that. And he was like, no, and... Uh, Right, and he wouldn't. They wanted yeah. him to hand over the technology, and he wouldn't. They tried to build their own suit and um, all that stuff. So, I wonder if they'll uh, play into that at all. What, what, why does he change his mind, or, or what that, what is that going to be? Yeah, well, probably. Uh, well, when we get, to, I think the events in Iron Man Three might do that. Do you have anything to say about Iron Man Two? Before we move um, on? this was the one with his alcohol problem, right? <laughs> yeah, a little. Yeah, yeah. No, because in the comics, I mean, one of the big arcs for Stark is that he has a serious. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like there is, there's, there's a like I'm trying. Remember, I have some uh, some collected Iron Man comics, and one of them, he's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm hooked on alcohol. I'm just drinking all the time. I'm not doing anything. I don't, I, I don't think I can even pilot this suit right now. And he's just wandering off. Yeah, is that an awesome scene where he's at the party and he's drunk in the suit and he's shooting things? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty awesome. And then they kind of touched on it with he's just like, well, I'm gonna die. Yeah, that's when you had the disease and all that stuff, yeah. Uh, 2011, Thor. And I remember this one, how could there be a Thor movie? That's ridiculous. How could this? How could you possibly do this? It's going to be st- It's gonna be like Masters of the Universe, if you remember that crazy movie from the 80s. Which is kind of, <laughs> yeah, kinda, some parts are reminding me of it, actually. But um, comes out, and it's pretty good, man. And uh, actually, I feel like it's the one you have to see to understand Avengers, like if you if you really watch Avengers and you yeah. can only watch one of these, it's kind of the one you have to watch because they introduced Loki, who's the main villain in Avengers, and also the Tesseract uh, is explained and kind of shown off, which mm-hmm. is the main kind of thing, and um, is part of the Infinity Stones, which is part of every other movie pretty much going forward, and it's yeah. going to lead to something down the line. Something big. So it was actually, storyline-wise, had a lot going on there. To set up the other the other movies. Well, Thor also they didn't really get to do it as much in Thor one as they did in Thor two, but they got to do a fair amount of. Thor was funny. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a lot of humor in there because uh-huh. this concept, like, I am this gigantic, huge, strong, muscular Norse deity, and now I'm just thrown into this world because I'm kind of a jerk sometimes, mm-hmm. and. He's just, he's stuck dealing with all this garbage and like, he doesn't know what this is like. And there's a lot of funny moments between him and the people who he runs into or the people who run into him with their car. <laughs> but there, there was a, I think the movie worked because there's a lot of humor. And also, I don't know if it's Thor one or two where you get to see a bunch of his buddies. 
Oh, it's His all of them. His buddies are yeah. great. Yeah, they all man. come to uh, they all come to Midgard and walk in, such walking fun around. Characters. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> yeah. They, had, they had a lot of fun with the Thor movie. They they kind of realized it's like ridiculous, so we'll kind of um, have some funny stuff. But again, not like making fun of the actual thing. It's not like self aware funny. Like, oh, this is dumb. It's no, it's, it's part of like, the story. It's, it it's works. yeah, and the fact that Thor is so hilariously pompous. Right. You dare strike the son of Odin? Yeah, it's a fish out of water story, really. It's what it is. <laughs> yeah, except the fish is like like a, a barracuda the fish or is like a swordfish or a super shark. So also in 2011, you had Captain America, the first Avenger. Now, this one was one that I thought had the least, like, I thought it had the least chance to do well. Okay. Because Captain America is such a good character and there was just so much you could do wrong. And again, it's also the, let's see, one, two, it's also like the fifth movie in on, on this series. So you're starting to be like, I don't know. I'm Can tired of these superhero going? things. Right. But, the, the, but what the, with Captain America, they turn everything around again because it's so different. Exactly. That's the point I was going to make. And you can do um, you can do a lot of these different movies. You can do a lot of these different characters because they do have differences. They're both the fun. If you play into that, you don't feel like you're watching the same thing 15 times. And this one, of course, taking place during World War II, totally different. Yeah, and, and the the thing I love about it is that you don't have Captain America as the <clears throat> I am such a great superhero, I am the best, I don't use guns. He's like, bro, there's a million Germans in that pillbox. Sure, I'll take an MP5. Oh, more than an MP5, and he didn't really have one of those then. But you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh, like, uh -huh. he you he doesn't he he's not a jerk about it, but he's not going to he doesn't just arbitrarily go. Now, guns are for the bad guys, people, okay? Oh, he's a soldier. He's a soldier, exactly. Take you and that's you that's taken the really out, important taken point out. they make. He's a soldier. He uses what equipment is available. And then, of course, the ending is just awesome. Wakes up in modern day. It's just freaking cool. Um, and there's so much you could do with this character, playing off this character, because his kind of ideas, his kind of uh, moral code is, is from a different time. So how does that uh -huh. play into today's world and, and like how does it clash with other people other characters that are around today it's like it's such he's, a cool thing to play with man yeah he's one of those fun characters that no matter what era it is if you reboot his character his origin story doesn't have to change at all <laughs> and he's very different than the other ones he's, he's the he's the pure white meat you know good guy all the way yeah whereas I mean, uh, some of the other ones are a little more cloudy a little more maybe sometimes darker like the ones we've mentioned before like okay just starting with like Iron Man, Tony Stark, the dude's a pompous, arrogant, Drunkard. somewhat entitled, <laughs> selfish guy Drunk. who tries to do the right thing, but he most I think he mostly does it because it's fun. <laughs> right? He has fun taunting people. Yeah. Well, in, in the next movie we're going to talk about, Avengers, 2012, already three years ago. Man, that's crazy. Wow. Um, <sighs> yeah, he's the, basically, it's a lot of, it's about him, and um, in the end, he you know, will sacrifices himself to save everyone, you know. Character um, growth. But this was just cool to see. I remember being real excited. Obviously, they made a lot of money. It was insane. Uh, but it's basically like you, you've invested in all these these previous movies, and okay, let's see what they're going to do. And uh, I think they delivered really well. Yeah, they everything really came together for this movie. Like they had a new a new guy playing the Bruce playing Bruce Banner slash the Hulk, which was bound to throw things into the mix. Mm -hmm. But he ended up being one of honestly one of my favorite characters in the movie. Yeah, um, uh, but his the, the 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 movie really capitalized on the interactions between the vastly different people involved with it. And this was tough. I mean, you you think about what you're trying to accomplish here, bringing all these characters together, all these actors. Uh, you have the all these previous movies that people have watched, and they're expecting something amazing because I've been, I watched all this, you know, hours of, of stuff. Mm -hmm. You better deliver. And if they blew it on that, then the whole thing's dead. You're done. <laughs> Forget it. But I think they did really well, and they obviously did uh, were successful. And um, you know, the next wave of movies comes. Yeah, and again, Coulson tying everybody together. And at this point, you have people, man, because. As long as these are good, people are going to go because they're already invested in the storylines and they want to see what's going to happen. I've seen you know X amount of them. I want to see where it goes. So like, you, as long as you keep making them now and they're good, people are going to keep going just to see. And that's what one of the things next. I want to see. Like the Avengers, they also did a good job with the puny humans, like with the Black Widow mm -hmm. and uh, with Hawkeye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just dudes. They're just people running around 
and yet they make them relevant. They are able to be relevant despite just the disparity in power between them. So 2013, Iron Man <clears throat> 3. It was okay. Uh, it wasn't, I don't think it was one of the better of the, the series. You know, um, yeah. They kind of followed the extremist storyline from the comics. Uh, they had the, the Mandarin. I kind of I liked the, the plot twist. People didn't really like it too it, much. It was okay, but I don't know. When you, what, what, like your options were a dude who's obsessed with dragons and kind of has dragon powers. <laughs> Well, not, they didn't really get into it. Um, yeah, he wasn't actually the Mandarin; he was an actor and pretending to be a, you know, an evil terrorist. And he was a hilarious hippie. Yeah, in reality, he was a stoner. Um, yeah, there's some good stuff in there, man. I like I like uh, Rob Downey Jr. is always good. Interacting mm-hmm. with the kid with that kid was fun. Yeah, um, all the suits at once, like fighting, was was really awesome. The ending, I mean, there's some. I don't yeah. really love Pepper Potts gaining powers and then. Actually, being the one to save Stark in the end is kind of a, a all right. Sure, the but. movie kind of had some plot holes. Yeah, it didn't. It others. wasn't one of the better ones. And I don't know yeah, how much was, of this is gonna matter. We'll see. Yeah. we'll see in uh, Age of Ultron. It was it fun, but it had issues. And then you had also to that 2013 Thor: The Dark World. <laughs> okay, this Not is the one where Thor just got to have fun. Okay. He's fighting like, uh, the elves and also uh, starting to introduce these Infinity Stones. Another mm-hmm. one was kind of introduced in here with his ether. Um, sure, there you go. Anything else to say about it? Go ahead. Well, they had um, they had some interesting... <clears throat> the movie basically... Thor got to F around and have some fun in this one. Yeah, okay. Like... And just some of the characters were... I don't know what movie I mean, you were on, watching. You got, you got, you got a lot of Loki up in here, didn't you? A lot of Loki. And there's it a twist fun, at the man. end. There's a twist at the end where Loki is pretending to be Odin. So maybe that'll play into things. Yeah, and you also got to see um, four of Thor's buddies. You got to see Thor F around. Hey. I didn't see that. Thor yeah, effing? No, 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 it was funny. It was funny. <laughs> Like you had fun. a what's what's your name like the 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 intern who's working with the scientists? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cat pa- Dennings. Padme. Oh no. Yeah, okay, the other one. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 Not Pad. <laughs> Padme. But when she's just like, <laughs> like when Mjolnir's coming, but like she sees everybody coming by and everyone's and they're like they're naming all the characters and then Mjolnir comes by and she's like Mew Mew because she can't say its name right. The movie was the movie I think was like. I feel like they, 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 everyone had a little bit more fun making this movie. Although the plot was a, was a little silly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, these two, I think 20, 2013, kind of like, oh, these aren't great. They're good. They're definitely a step down from what we've seen with Avengers, maybe from some of the previous run. So we, we enter 2014, we're like, I don't know, man, I don't know what's going to happen here because we're looking at Captain America 2 and we're looking at Guardians of the Galaxy. And I think people, people are really skeptical um, about yeah. both. But what you had were probably the two freaking best movies there were. <laughs> Cap two. Oh, what, what, which one was first? Cap, one first? Cap America: The Winter Soldier was first. That was amazing. Freaking awesome. Uh, like some of the stuff that he did, like they all did. Them, like the movie was a political. There's a lot of political nonsense and mumbo jumbo in there, mm-hmm. and it really makes sense. Stuff about being a soldier. Stuff about government control and. Uh, NSA type of you know surveillance stuff and there's a lot going on, but also at the same time just took the action in these movies to a whole other level. Just great stuff where Cap is taking down like a helicopter. Oh and, yeah, uh, just freaking great, just freaking great and stuff. You can kind of see some of the some of the problems that he's going to be having with uh with with, with the, the powers that be. Yeah, good way to phrase it. And then, of course, Guardians of the Galaxy, which a lot of people are skeptical about. <laughs> is not really... Neither of these movies had any right to be as awesome as they are. Guardians of the Galaxy, characters that people are not as familiar with. A lot of these other characters appeared in animated stuff or uh, previous yeah. previous things. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy, relatively, uh, it's been around a long time, but a lot of these characters kind of uh, were put together not that long ago in the comics. So this thing comes out great. Uh, just fun, funny. It's it's like a you know it's it's a Star Wars movie. <laughs> it's like it's, it's like it's, a great. It's, it has all yeah. those great things that Star Wars has are also there. The right? characters, the technology, <clears throat> the weird aliens, mm-hmm. the 
the the what's the word the politics it's just as fun like that space adventure type thing right that was kind of missing from the prequel Star Wars like it's all there so um and and Marvel really showing like the diversity of what they can do here it's all the same universe but you can do something in space that's like a little more fun but at the same time you can have the Winter Soldier and which is a little more serious dark um but all kind of works together it's all the different flavors of the rainbow right yeah but it was just the movie was just so fun. The movie was the most fun comic book movie I have ever seen. It might be the be, the best. I don't know. It's up there, certainly. Like there was no reason for like, like it, it's it's weird. It's a comic book movie. You think of bright colors and exciting stuff, people doing crazy things, and just having fun with the movie, mm-hmm. right? Just having fun with the characters. And this was the first movie that really, really really did that like it was just i i I can't i I just can't complain about it my opinion those two those two are the best i would say captain i say the witcher soldier guardians of the galaxy and the daredevil show are the best things that marvel studios has has put out but of course it could be a new edition coming out very soon age of ultron (laughs) i believe we were uh were we the first group of people to see the trailer at at comic-con is that right I believe so, yes. Or was it shown other places, do you know? Before I that? think we were supposed to be the first ones to see we it. We were the first ones to see it. <laughs> so and Ant-Man. Not a big deal. I mean, so, oh, yeah, Ant-Man, yeah. So, Ultron's coming out, man. Um, what are you, some things maybe you're looking for in there? Or you just kind of <sighs> see what happens? Problem is, I never really read too much of the comics with Ultron in them. Yeah, it was weird. A lot of people aren't familiar with him. He's, he's been in quite a bit. Um so, uh, you know, obviously it's going to be different anyway. And we'll see what they do. Yeah, but, I mean, I don't even know. What, the only thing I know about Ultron is that he was not built by Tony Stark. Right, man, so man, it's going to be, man, it's gonna be fairly different anyway. There was an Age of Ultron comic series, but totally different than this. I don't think there's anything to do with it whatsoever. Um, that was more about, like, time travel and crazy stuff, which <laughs> I, don't, I think they're just kind of using the name, you know. Well, I'm certainly excited to see it, man. We'll see what happens. We're definitely going to be talking about our thoughts on it and all that stuff, you know. Um, I just want to run down the uh, movies that are coming that Marvel has announced. <laughs> I know a couple of these. So 2015, we also get Ant-Man. It's going to be in July. Yep. 2016, you're going to have Captain America Civil War. And, of course, Doctor Strange is entering the fray. This, I... I... I have to, you know what I think they're going to do, man? They, they looked around and saw that people are watching stuff like Supernatural and, uh, you know, some of this supernatural, this like myst- mystical crazy stuff. Uh-huh. And they're just going to roll with it. I hope that it works. I hope it goes very well. Because Doctor Strange is a really cool character who, I mean, he had his own animated movie, but. It could be the surprise. Wow, it's great. Uh, and it's awesome to kind of like, there's so much history to the Marvel Universe. There's so much that's already kind of been done, um, and there's so many different sides to it. So it's ex- yeah, exploring that whole other world, that, that mystical side to it, which they haven't got into yet. So, cool. 2017 is a huge year, man. You got Guardians of the Galaxy 2. You will have Thor Ragnarok, which I don't know what the hell that's going to be. That, we, I we mean, find out judging by the name, out. they're probably going to kill Odin. And you will have Spider-Man which will be part of the universe because there was, it's Marvel working I, with Sony. I, and there's a yeah. rumor that's going to be called Spider-Man the Next Avenger. That's the rumored title. <sighs> we will see. I, I, I'm i glad Spider-Man, but he belongs in there. Spider-Man. But we're not getting, we're not getting Andrew Garfield again. Like, we're not getting totally Andrew Garfield new, again. It's a totally new thing. <clears throat> like, it's a different guy? Like, it's a different... It's a different um, actor. Peter Parker? It's a different, whole, whole new thing. And he's coming in and uh, it makes me feel good because I feel like Spider-Man should be here, you know. I mean, Spider-Man yeah, he should Marvel. be there. Like the, you but, see Marvel, that's the first character that comes to mind, so bringing him in is great. Honestly, though, I mean, seriously, um, it wasn't... <sighs> wow, how did this How did this happen? Why did my brain die? I don't know. John, what, what did you just say? I don't... I said, uh, he's coming in. Who is he? I forgot Peter who he Parker? is. Peter Parker? Yeah, Peter... No, seriously, Spider-Man? Andrew Burfield did a good Peter Parker. That's, that's in the past. But he did a good job. It's really frustrating. You want him brought back in? 
I, I, how I could thought you explain he did a good job. I honestly thought he did a good you job. You can't have him come in because you can't. Ex- how do you explain that there's been Avengers and all this stuff for the whole time, but he they just never referenced it in these movies? Yeah, I guess. Plus, those movies I, have problems, man. The second ones were all messed up. We talked about it when it came out. Yeah, it yeah, all I kinds know. of I, messed up. So they can't do it. Like no one does these movies on the level that Marvel does. It. We'll see what uh, you know. We'll see what the DC stuff's going to be. But all this stuff is beyond what Sony's done. Absolutely. Um, then 2018, you're going to get Avengers again. Black Panther's coming in. This is going to be a tough year, man. There are three of these things. Avengers, then Black Panther, then Captain Marvel. Wow. So introducing new people. Wait, wait, wait. Captain Marvel, like... Like, like, like the chick Captain Marvel. Like can, can, can Carol Danvers? I assume so. Wow. Just to do something different. That's cool. And then 2019, you got Avengers. It's going to be the uh, Infinity War. So the 2018 is part one, 2019 is part two. Oh my gosh. And you will have also the Inhumans movie. And that's all they've announced so far. Dude, so. I can't wait to hear Black Bolt talk. Oh, come on. He doesn't speak. Can't. Destroys things. Yeah. So that's it, my friends. That's our big commercial for Marvel here. Well, you almost uh, at least a couple bucks. Maybe pay my uh, my ticket here. In the- yeah, you know, if, on, this were, if, if this were DC, I bet you we could win a contest. <laughs> Yeah, John's uh, trying to get me to enter this like. No, I'm not. I I read through the whole thing. Be a and host. I was starting a, to cry. Was like, what was it? Be a DC Comics host or something for the. Be a DC like reporter at oh, Comic Con, yeah. and you have to yeah, basically to fill this? out a video saying so. why you it should be you. So you do a five minute video, and you can't show anything, any trademarks or anything in your video that aren't from DC. Mm-hmm. Be- you know, just because because you know they don't have to blur anything out or whatever. But then if you – then the two people with the most retweets are finalists and then six people voted on by whether they f- fit the criteria for the video best, those six people are also finalists. And then you have to make eight more videos, one a week for a challenge in yeah. order to win the ability to go to San Diego Comic-Con. <laughs> you see my convention footage. They don't want me doing that. <laughs> oh my gosh, that would be so good. Yeah, I'd, I'd try my best, but well, it's not happening. I'm not, I'm not entering. Um, let's see here. Where do I want to go with this? Let's talk about continuity, mm. right? So with, I think the strength of all this is the continuity. But at times, and we've seen this in comic books, seen this in other things, the continuity almost starts to hinder you. Right? And then uh, it kind of goes out of control, especially when you have different movies of different people working on things, people that were working on it leave or, or, or quit or whatever, and then you have other people come in. I think it's definitely something to look look for. Can they keep it going? And and uh, you know, and will they uh, start ripconning things? Will they start screwing around with it? Um, can they continue it? You know, 2019, you're going to be 11 years into this run of Which movies. Which is insane. They're all, and the actors going to get so, uh, so at that point... Can they keep it straight? Are they going to start screwing around with it? But at the same time, can they give it room to breathe where people can watch it and understand stuff without having to watch like 15 movies before that? So um, that's going to be the, I think that's going to be one of the challenges that we will see how it goes with that. Um, do you feel that there's too much superhero stuff? Can, can it su- sustain itself? Can this keep going? Oh, dang. Sorry, I bumped the U button. So I don't think that... I think that it can go on, but, I mean, I think it's possible for them to keep making good movies, but eventually they're going to F it up. You can't make a million good movies in a row. So you think they will screw it up themselves, or you think it'll just be, people will become exhausted? Well, I think what's going to happen is you're going to basically, well, Disney is a great company to look at, as an example. Look at all the Disney animated movies. Some of them are really good. Some of them are less good. You're going to get that. You're going to, for every Lion King and Aladdin, you're going to get a few that aren't as good, mm-hmm. but are still watchable. Like, Yeah, I think the problem is eventually going to be that it's not just them doing this, right? You have all these movies, plus now you have DC coming in. And those could be good, it's fine. But there's also, you know, Sony and there's also Fox doing stuff, competing with themselves, right? With, with the Marvel movies. Like, you have this Fantastic Four, and if that's really bad, they kind of hurt it. It's going to kill them. They yeah, kind of hurt, hurt they, It's like they're all kind of put in the same category of comic book movies. So if there's one that's horrible, it doesn't have to necessarily be made by Marvel. It's going to hurt the whole thing. It's going to 
tank the entire genre. It definitely hurts it. Plus, I've heard Valiant, the Valiant characters, which was um, from the early 90s. Prince Valiant? The early 90s was Valiant Comics. They had all these different oh. characters, Exo Man of War. Oh, um, those guys. Okay. Yeah, it was like Turok and all this stuff. They're starting, they're getting like movie deals. <laughs> you also have multiple television shows going right now. There's uh, Arrow and Flash. Is talking, they're talking about doing another spin off of, of one of those. I mean, a third show on they're, CW. They're not bad. You have the Netflix shows. No, none of it's really bad. And trust me, I've seen all this stuff, man. I watch all of it. They're talking about doing Shields going to have a spin off. Another one of those. There are two of those, man. Um, and I watch all this stuff. I saw, like, I've seen all of Shield. I've seen Agent Carter. I don't know if you saw any of that. I watched that. I, oh, that's out? That came out. That was during, uh, like, March or, or February. Oh, it's how, how is that? It was okay. You know, it wasn't great. It was okay. I watched all of it. Uh-huh. But I think it, at a point, it's just a lot. Um, and it's just, it's, you know, I think the average person might get exhausted with it. And every genre eventually goes away. You look at, like, jazz <laughs> or uh, whatever, man. Um Heavy metal. It eventually has its, its rise and its fall. So you may see the superhero stuff eventually die out, but chances are five years later, like we've seen in the past, they're going to try it again, and maybe it'll go up once more. They're, they're, yeah, they're never, they're never going to stop. They're never going to stop trying. You know. Um, one thing I want to ask you. Uh oh. So if you're Marvel right now and you got this plan to 2019. Do you eventually end this story, this whole thing? Do you end it and then take some time off and then reboot the whole universe? Uh, or, that's tough. Or do you just keep going as long as you possibly can um, and just keep going and going? <laughs> now, if you do that, yeah, you're going to have to replace actors sooner or later. But you know what? I almost hope they do this because it'll be so interesting. Um, in, the, in the comics... Characters don't really age. They do get older, but it's maybe <laughs> for every twenty years they go by. Five, maybe five years goes by. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so I think Spider Man's like, in his thirties now. Man. Yeah, he's like in his thirties. Sp- yes, yeah, Sp- Spider Man's in his thirties. The the X Men are like how old again? Like they, like they they were from the six. They were teenagers in the sixties. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So they they, they were, should you know, be fifty years was like fifteen in their years. So, um, but I mean, if you let's say Marvel's going on these movies for twenty years from now. And you have old Iron Man, and you have like um, old Cap, and how do they? Uh, they'll have to create new stories, and, and maybe they'll pass the, the the stuff down to someone else. Like does Iron Man give like a seventy year old Robert Downey Jr. give the suit to someone else or something? Or I mean, it's really oh, interesting to get going. into, man. You like know? yeah, if they kept it going. Like... Yeah, if you should be really kind of unique, and um, I don't know if that's possible. I don't know if they can pay these guys for like decades from now and uh, I don't know if people will want to see these movies anymore at that point but it's certainly something to, to wonder about think about <laughs> like I I could see an old uh, what's it called um, I could see an old Iron Man doing that he, he, dude can you imagine Tony Stark in like his 70s he's going to be like hitting on everybody I don't know if they can they could sustain it and then you're talking um <laughs> You're talking 20 years from now, and it goes back to 2008. The series of movies. That's like his whole generation has, has gone by. And like people that were born, people that are born now would be like, you know, 20. And they got to watch uh, stuff from before they were born to understand the movies that are coming out. Yeah, that's... A, oh, <laughs> dang, man. <clears throat> okay, so John, when, did, when, did, when was, when was um, Iron Man 1 again? 2008. Okay, so... Yeah, like the youngest person who could conceivably, the oldest young person who could conceivably, seven years old. If you were born in 2008, you're probably going to see Age of Ultron. Right? Like you weren't even born when Iron Man came out, and now you're going to see a movie, like and you're, you're like six or seven, you can understand what's going on. You're going yeah. to see a movie that like it's a series that took place before you were born. <laughs> That's... So can you keep wow. this going, like intergenerational? Interesting. Or they? I think they'll probably stop. If I had to guess, they'll stop at some point. Wait, maybe five, six years, and then start again. Yeah. You know. But we shall see, man. It's certainly uh, interesting and good times, man. I never thought we'd be. I never thought we would have this. No way. Sitting in the theater, probably with you, watching, uh, you know, freaking uh, <laughs> X Men: Last Stand, or. Even, even before that, when I was sitting there watching Batman and Robin, and 
Um, I was like, they'll, I was like, they'll never get it. No way. They'll never figure it out. They'll never do the genre right. And, and then not to say that all this is perfect or all this is like, you know, uh, Oscar worthy stuff or like whatever, but none of it sucks. That's for sure. And a lot of it's really good. A lot of it's good. Some of it's really good and none of it sucks. And that's all the best we can ask. For yeah, it. That's <laughs> the important thing. It's good enough. It's good. It's really good. Absolutely. So, um, that was the Marvel show, man. Anything else to throw in this pot? I think we've pretty much covered the gamut. I mean, I, I some, I mean, we're, we're just the movies that came before Iron Man. Some of them were good, and some of them were just really, really bad. But don't forget, Blade happened. Blade is really important because that came after Batman and Robin. That was the next one. Yeah, and people and didn't. It did better yeah. than they expected, and it was like, oh wow, Blade did well. Uh, maybe you could, maybe oh. maybe you could do Spider Man, right? Well, that's the thing. You don't really <clears throat> understand. Like, that was a comic book movie, but a lot of people didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it didn't really feel like a comic book movie. It felt like this is a dude running around killing vampires. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was before vampires became, you know, sensitive. Oh, gosh. <laughs> don't. Well, I think at the end of the day, you got to tip your hat. To the the uh, pioneers and all this, man, the comic creators. These are the guys that made this happen. Those are the guys they that should really down, be reaping the rewards right now. They laid down the foundation and the blueprints, and um, the movie stuff's great. But they're able to like take a lot from it, and um, gotta you gotta respect those guys, man. So, and as we found out last week with the mm -hmm. uh, the plight of the Superman creators. Wasn't always so easy for those those cats. So no, at all. Got respect, and my friends, uh, we're gonna say goodbye here. Gotta remind you, please check out stayballsy.com, ballsiest non porn site on the web. Got all the shows up there, all the MP3s, all the links you need, all the Shnoz Man Hole Punch episodes, links to the DVD store, Blu-ray store, shirts, and all that. Uh, next week, we're trying to plan something nice for you, something a little different than we've been doing. This is already the fifth show that we've been back on. I can't believe it. Unbelievable. I know. Insane. So we're uh, five shows down. Thanks for being with us every week. Man, a lot of great feedback on Twitter and, and all that. So hopefully next week, we have something a little different for you, something kind of cool. We'll also be talking about Avengers, talking about Free Comic Book Day. <laughs> OJ probably eating some kind of baby animal. He's obsessed with this kind of thing. Oh, my gosh. Food. Maybe I'll have some kind of adventure with my car. Seems like every week. Tires. Oh, tickets. yeah, dude. I think I should stop driving. I don't know what's going to happen next. Oh, man. So, I personally uh, just hate driving. I do, too. It sucks. Um, that's going to do it, my friends. Oh? OJ, say goodbye to the wonderful people. Well, wonderful people, thank you all for listening. For John Rambo for OJ, this is OJ signing off. This has been a production of StayBallsy.com, the best in free and optional entertainment. Have a pleasant evening, and remember, stay ballsy. Don't take any shit from anyone. <laughs>